All right, it's time to start talking about Rig on the Fly. Rig on the Fly is, in my opinion, uh, going to be necessary for animating in Blender. If you're not using Rig on the Fly, you're probably wasting a lot of time. Uh, so what does Rig on the Fly do for you? We'll start with the very simple things. Uh, we'll have, let's put on, uh, let's take, say, the root bone here and the center of gravity bone here, and let's just put them on their own layer, layer two here. So then we'll pull up layer two. We only have those two bones are the only things on this thing. What we can do is go under, if everything's collapsed, it might look a little something like this. So you want to have armature tools open and hit basic setup while your only, any bone you can see is going to change at this point to get some controllers. All right, so what happened here? I got uh, my root controller has a, a widget assigned to it and same with my center of gravity. And you can change the size of those, say you'll like want the root controller to be a little bigger or smaller or something. Controller shape settings will let you do that. And you can make it say bigger or make it say smaller. I'll make it a little bit on the small side there. And then let's take that center of gravity and also make that a little bit smaller. Okay, so we've got these two bones here. Now let's go ahead and bring back in the layer with all our, uh, our controller gear. So I've got a bunch of deforming bones on these other layers for the arms. Remember, we've just done the arms and set those up correctly. Uh, but these are the control bones and they're all FK right now. So, uh, so let's say I'm like playing with this. I'm like, all right, I want this bone right now. If I hit G, nothing happens. It just rotates because it's at the end of this FK, uh, just normal chain. Now I want that to be an IK, right? Well, Normally what you'd do is you'd set up another controller and copy and do some things and do that. And if you wanted to have both FK and IK, you'd set up a whole bunch more controllers and a bunch of constraints and say which one you're using at any given point and have some properties, do all the things. All right, well, if you've got Reagan on the fly installed, all you do is uh, you can decide if you like pull vectors or not. For now, I'm going to not choose the pull vector. Let me, and I'll show you what, what that means. So I click IK, and now this control here is an IK controller. Now, the reason why it moved is because I had not keyed the positions of any of those bones when I had moved them around like that. So actually, let's undo all that and come back to here. Um, we will select everything. Okay, so we're back at an, a default pose. And actually, let's go to a non-default pose for to make this really clear what's going on. So here I am in a non-default pose. Again, I click this hand controller. Again, I'm not going to choose pull vector, hit IK. And now what happens is this, uh, because this had been keyed, what happened was it changed this to an IK chain, keyed everything the way it should be, and uh, left it in the exact same pose as before. But now this controller is an IK controller. I can move that around. And then uh, because I didn't choose pull vector, you can see her elbows going a little bit weird there. Well, we can just take that upper arm and like twist it and put it where we want it. Say we want the elbow pointing that way. All right, so that gives you the uh, ability to um, change very quickly from uh, an FK chain to an IK chain. All right, so now what that means is if I move her entire body, say using this, every everything will move along, but because this is an IK chain, it won't move. So that stays there. So let's say, for example, um, and actually let's go ahead and key that to this uh, pose and then change it back to FK. All right, well, now that, that whole setup, all right, and I didn't key the, um, I didn't key the humerus, and so it actually changed back to the way it was before. And that's why it moved when I turned off the IK here. Uh, so you got to make sure you key everything that you don't want to change back and forth when you switch between IK and FK. And actually I'm going to undo because I like that original pose. All right, so here we are back in the original pose. So that, uh, so let's say you want the arms to move, but not the legs to move when you move, say, that center of gravity. Well, then you can just grab both of our feet here, click IK. Now those are IK constraints, and now when you move her body, her feet stay pinned where they're at. And if you do like pull vectors, then you can go ahead and click this pull vector here, and then when you hit IK, these two are IK constraints, and now here are the two pull vectors for her knees. And so again, you can move her around, do whatever you want, and that that everything follows along. Now let's say you put her in this position, and now it's like, oh, I want her hands to stay there. All right, well, click both of her hands, click IK, Oh, all right, I forgot to key the position. All right, so take everything, key it, grab her two hands, change those to IK, grab her body. Now her hands and her uh, feet stay in the same place, but her body is changing. Well, that is a really awful position for that IK. Oh, that's the other one. 
I suppose I can put it up here. Uh, right, that's going to be a little difficult to be posing in this. Actually, what is going on there? That just doesn't seem correct. Well, let's bring it back to FK pose. There. All right, because I... Now the reason this has gone wrong is because in this pose I was testing hyper extending her elbow. So now when I add an FIK constraint with a pole vector on the right arm there, it's going to place the pole vector in a well down here, but her arm is bent backwards, so you can't you can't actually put it anywhere that it makes sense. So you gotta make sure whatever if you are gonna use that pole vector, you have to make sure that um, joint is not hyper extended like that. So uh, here's what we'll do here. We'll clear that rotation so now it's not hyper extended and now I bet if I do an OIK constraint well it did it might have gone back to the key position all right went back to the key position before it changed it all right so which makes sense actually you would want it to do that uh, so I would actually have to on hyper extend elbow key it in that position grab the hand control click the IK constraint and now I think the uh, the elbow will bend in the proper direction and that's, uh, well, that's fine. So I guess you don't want to hyperextend your character's joints before you start doing IK stuff to them. Uh, or you'll want to, I think if I just make sure and if I go ahead and come back to that hyperextended pose, there we go. And then if I don't have a pole vector on that and I do IK, I think it'll actually be fine. It still bends backwards. But can I... Looks like it can rotate it to unbend it backwards. So right, if you're going to hyperextend your character's joints, make sure you don't have pole vectors. All right, so what else can we do here? I'm going to undo everything, come back to uh, basic FK rig and back in the default pose. There we go. Uh, so, and you can just change from IK to FK and back again, but look, for the purposes of demonstrating what's going on here, I need to keep everything vanilla uh, without the uh, all the extra goodness that um, Rig on the Fly is providing. But let's see another thing. Let's talk about the spine here, right? So uh, let's go back to the default pose. So here all the bones are unposed, and if I twist her uh, rib cage here, you can see there's two other spine bones going down into her hips. Those are not turning or doing anything. All right, well, let's make them do something. We have, another thing we do is the rotation and scale tools here. Let's take that and make that a length of three, one, two, three bones. And hit distribute and now what happens is the other two bones disappear because they're controlled by it and then there's this one controller here that controls that original bone but now you can see if i turn it the mesh is turning all the way down here and see if i rotate it like that or rotate it in some other direction so what's happening there is the rotation of this bone is going all the way down that chain of three bones and so it ends up looking much more correct without having to go and create a bunch of constraints and do all the work to do that. And then suppose if you end up liking that, uh, let's take this and create a new pose on say five here. So we take all those bones and paste them. So now we're here, what we can do is take that bone, hit apply, and it'll put all the FK bones back where they were. And then you can start tweaking them, say like do this or do this, whatever you want to do. And then let's say, let's say for example, I just want to tweak this bone, but I don't want her entire body to move. All right, well, I could just grab her uh, head bone here, chain, leave the IK chain length at two, let's say, so it'll come down to her spine, all right? Hit IK. Now her head is an IK thing. Uh, let's uh, make sure, I suppose, and put it in a pose here so it doesn't change. All right, so that was how it was keyed there. All right, so let's go back, we pick our head, we do the thing. Let's, let's tear off the pole vector again. So we hit IK. All right, well now this part of her body is IK. So if I twist this, then the only these two bones will change. The other bones will try to stay where they're at. And so I can, uh, you know, tweak this around a little bit without her entire body changing. And I can also tweak this bone here. And this, because it's IK, will stay in that position. I suppose I could even kind of try to pull it and put it into some pose. It's really difficult to have OIK on her neck, though, for me. This is just a part, just a way of holding her head into place. All right, we'll need to take everything, key it, and then we'll take that and get rid of that IK constraint. So it goes back to an FK, uh, goes back to an FK skeleton here. So it's just like a regular normal thing that you can do like normal. 
And uh, let's, let's, I guess, um, anything else we can do here that uh, shows off what's going on. Well, I suppose we could just start doing a pose, right? Here, she's posed too far bent over. She would fall over if that was the case. So we want to take her, this part of her body and move it to the left, but we want our feet to stay in place. All right, so let's grab her. Uh, let's key everything here the way it is. Grab her two feet. Change those to IK. Grab this controller. Move it left. And I suppose maybe maybe move it down a little bit. But then if we do that, we want to uh, take our knees. Let's bend them forward a bit. And then let's... Mm, I suppose we can take our feet and put them a little closer together. Well, now, again, looks like she would fall over, so I suppose this needs to be a little bit further left. And then let's turn that. Let's do like this. There we go. I suppose that could be even a little further down. So now her knees are going into each other a little bit, so let's take that, hit rotate on that a little bit. There we go. Now she looks like she's in roughly a stance she could actually pull off. All right, let's key everything. Let's take these two controllers, turn them back into FK again. Let's take this controller here, and I suppose we'll make it IK, and we'll stick it onto her, uh, onto her leg here. All right, it's more or less touching her leg. Then we can take the elbow and, let's say, point it in quite a bit like that. It's a pretty typical thing for a, a girl to do. This one is still, oh, this is still FK over here, because we haven't changed it. So let's, uh, I don't know, bend her elbow up like that a little bit and bend her wrist down like that a little bit. And then uh, let's uh, take the everything and key it. And then let's take that and then do this distributing that uh, rotation again. So let's distribute. And now we want to take that control and say bend it a little bit. All right, this is moving. So let's turn that back. Or, yeah, we don't want that to stay in place. Or maybe we do. Actually, I think we do want to leave it in place. Let's just take her uh, clavicle and rotate it down a bit like that so she has more space to rotate her body out. And I suppose we could even rotate it to the side a little. Actually, let's rotate it on a little bit more like that. And then uh, we could take all of that, key it. We can take this here and apply it so it goes back to a normal FK spine. Then you could take her head and let's make that uh, the rotation, let's say, two. So it will be the head bone and the neck bone, right? And let's distribute that. So now we have this head controller, and when we turn the head, it also rotates her neck and everything. So we can put like that there. Let's grab her eyes here. Make sure they are in individual origins, and then we can rotate both of them. Let's see, a little bit like that. Then let's take the head and rotate it a little bit more like that. Okay, now we've got a fairly dynamic pose going on here, all with uh, just a few tweaks to creating IK controls and uh, distributed rotation controls. Now let's take everything and key it and grab this head control thing and do apply and that'll put it back into FK all the way through. Then let's take this IK controller and let's turn that back into FK there. And uh, I suppose we could just call that done right here. We've got a nice pose. So let's, I think everything is already keyed so we can, anytime we want to, we can come back to this frame and we have that pose. Let's take a look at some various angles and see anything else that needs to be tweaked. It actually looks pretty good here, so uh, I think I'll call that pose done. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe her shoulder, right? So again, if I, right now this is all an FK, so if I move her clavicle, her entire arm all the way down to her hand are going to move. Which, you know, maybe is what you want. And in this case, I think it is what I want. I'm going to move it about like that. All right, and then actually probably that wasn't what I wanted, so because I'm going to have to counter animate this hand bit out of the way again. Let's twist that in like that. And bend it just a bit. All right, there's a pulse. Would she fall over if she's facing forward? No, she looks like she'd be good there. She looks like she'd be good there, so I think she's balanced.